Hi, this is Bill Knapp from SpeakerBillKnapp.com coming to you from my property here in Colorado. You know, usually I show you things that are really pretty and, and spectacular and everything. Today, well, it's going to be a little different. Uh, before I get to that, though, I want to go back. What am I talking about today? I've got a question for you at the end of this, at the end of this video. But let's refresh something first. Remember my videos on brain chains? What are brain chains? They're those beliefs that we have, that we developed when we were younger, that have no basis in reality, and yet they keep us back from things all the time. So, now, now that we've talked about that for a split second, why am I up here and why am I saying it's not going to be a pretty day? Well, let's look at this. I'm going to pan the camera down right now and just look at something very briefly. And what you're looking at is a one-day-old carcass from a deer that had been killed. And I have the camera come back up to me now. Why am I showing you this? Well, yesterday this was all snow. And it was fascinating because at that point this deer had just been killed. Probably an hour or two before that. It was bright red, the blood was still fresh. Okay, the reason I'm pointing this out is because yesterday, if you had been able to look at the snow around it, you would have seen the hierarchy of nature. It was a mountain lion kill. Obvious, big mountain lion paws all over the place. Then there were bobcat prints, and there were coyote prints, and fox. And when I came up here, I scooted away a golden eagle because it had been feeding on this. And the magpies were in the trees and in the bushes. It's the way of nature. It's the design of nature. You start off with, in this area, the mountain lions or maybe the bears. And they're the king. And then as you go down the list, the other groups that are around it not only depend on that king, but they also fear that king. So what you have is the mountain lion killing the deer. And then when he's done with eating what he wants to, he then leaves. Usually he goes up into a tree, and he's not around right now, but he usually goes up into a tree and watches his carcass if he wants to come back and feed on it. But when he's done, then you've got the bobcats that come up next, and then the coyotes and then the fox and all the way down until you get down to the beetles that eat the dung that's left over there. Why am I bringing this up? Because I started thinking, that's the way of nature here. Is that the same way of nature for man? I mean, is it survival of the fittest where the big dog wins? I don't think so. I don't think that it has anything to do with the manner in which nature provides itself. Because if that were the case, then all those people that have been physically or mentally or both handicapped or have been challenged, who have done so beautifully in their family, in their, in their, their lives, the most prime example that we all know is Helen Keller. And yet she succeeded with every kind of disability possible. So I don't feel that man is in the same realm as nature. So then ask yourself, are you at the top of the heap or are you at the bottom of the heap? Or where on that heap are you? Where on the challenge of life are you? And then ask yourself, why am I there? And I would suggest, and I'd like to hear what you have to say, but I would suggest that you're there because of the brain chains that you have developed from the time you were a child. The brain chains that are holding you back. I didn't have the opportunities, the education, the, the body, whatever it is, the money. But then stop yourself from those excuses and ask yourself, is that the, the truth? Is that really what happened? Or is that just my brain chain, my excuse? And then once you determine where you are on the hierarchy of man, then ask yourself, where do you want to be? Just an idea. 
Let me know what you think. Do you think that it's just survival of the fittest where we land up with a carcass like this? Or do you think that we are putting ourselves in our own little area because of our brain chains? Think about it. Let me know. Until the next time, this is Bill Knapp from speakerbillknapp.com. Please live in abundance and with unbelievable amounts of gratitude.